both of these players currently gold on the constructed ladder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Finals match here. Heat and Plain Dreaming Fox against Coast City as Kagalichu. We'll take a look at opening hands for both players. So just a little bit of a medical. Uh, Kagalichu did very well last week. Uh, Di Dreaming Fox Diamond Sapphire hasn't been doing bad ever, even with Lasgar's Vengeance around. Not that surprising to see these two in the finals. It is a little surprising to see a dream call here. <laughs> so Coast City's opening hand, we see Blood Shard, Well of Ancients, Rapal Gang, Runir Hierophant, Underworld Crusader, and Double Cottontail Explorer. Over for Heat, and we see Eldorathian Glory, Guidance, Dream Call, Sapphire Shard, a Diamond or Sapphire Ice, Transmogger Fade, and a Well of Purpose. I'm a big fan of these hands. I mean, we've been seeing it all day. Uh, the Kogelish player just has really good cards. Crusader and Runir. What do you, how do you even compare any other three drop in the game to those? And if I'm not mistaken, he has a signature hand here. They have a Guidance and some resources that allow them to play that Guidance. They are basically already in the driver's seat. The only thing that would have made it better was Arcade Focus, of course. Arcane like Focus two Arcade Focus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turn two here for Coast City. We see Cottontail Explorer. Going to find some resources. Gargolith will go into the crypt. That's a great card to see hit the crypt, actually, because that's the Rotten Rancor target of choice, I would say, in this matchup. Keaton will play out a Sapphire, and we'll see Guidance allow him to Fate Weave and draw a card. You know, I'm really happy that Hex has animated cards. It makes it makes it so much interesting. I really do like it in game, just seeing those. Yeah, I kind of wish there was like a less uh, less amazing version for like you know, just like so some commons and uncommons could have like a little flare or something. Yeah, it's still pretty cool. I just I dig it enough that I want it on more things. True. Five damage here is going to take Heaton down to twenty. So we go back over to him. He'll play out a well of purpose, looking yeah. for that sapphire threshold. And I still don't think Dream Fox is going to be twenty-five. Like five damage <laughs> on turn three, and now you're at twenty. The you know the the regular amount. <laughs> into a note here, going to target that Underworld Crusader. That's going to transform it and all Underworld Crusaders into something random. And we'll see. Blood and random. Blood random. We'll see what it turns into. Turns it into prejudice. That's, that's, actually, that's actually not bad. Yeah, so that's some draft crap that you would normally never run. But in this scenario, so just for anybody who doesn't know, prejudice has an underworld allegiance effect. And at the start of your turn, if you control an underworld troop, each opposing champion discards a card. Ventil the Brew Priest into a resource. I think I might have dropped the prejudice. I'm not even gonna lie. I would have probably. Like I can understand the desire to get Fenteo on the board as soon as possible, but against a control player, just limiting their options seems like the most ideal way to handle it. Arcane focus here for Heaton. Still has Transmogrify to deal with that Fenteo, and also could draw an answer here as well. Arcane Focus into Arcane Focus. That's always a good thing, right? Transmogrify going to hit that Fenteo, so no threat there. Turns into a Vampire Prince, though. That's a threat. That's a little bit of a threat. That's a nice one. Get some extra damage here. Get some extra shards. Main deck, Waltz of the Dam. Didn't expect to see that. Coast City's got some interesting choices. Both of these players are actually Next. running some slight... Yeah. Yeah. Some very That Dream Call... Main deck Waltz. I guess that must be because he was expecting the mirror matchup, and it's good in the mirrors. So a swing here for three. More importantly, though, that mill for one, it's going to be a resource, which turns it into that bloodstone and be able to deal a point of damage and gain some health as well. 
Prejudice now coming down. And with that Underworld Legions, with that Cottontail Explorer at the start of Coast City's turn, he'll be able to mill. Or bury, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, discard a card for one from his opponent. Yeah, I would not be surprised to see Into the Unknown used on that, or at least something done to that uh, Cottontail Explorer to try to negate that effect. It's just losing a card every turn. I mean, it's manageable, but it's not where you want to be. Does have that dream call to just like dump six more cards, five more cards into their hand, just like. And here we go, dream call. For two. I wish we could see the cards they could see. I know. I wish it would do too. It would be interesting to see the options they had and why they picked the cards that they picked out of the ones in there. We'll see Guidance here. He has Valor Rising. That's an interesting choice uh, off that uh, dream call. Valor Rising going to go ahead and go to the crit. Back over to Coast City. Vampire Prince, again, available to hit here. Gain some health and, more importantly, bury a card from Heaton's deck. And at this point, uh, Coast City is going to be able to drop multiple cards onto the board. Now, we do see the Eldurathan's Glory getting ready to be a blowout. Runier Hierophant going to come down. Here comes Cottontail Explorer. That'll plus up the Runier with plus one, plus one. We'll probably see the Battle Hopper to bring it to four. That takes it out of Eldurathan Glory range. Three damage here to Heat and will take him to 12. Co City to 26. Transmogrifade, as a result, will be buried. Into the unknown on that rune or higher going to turn it into tilling the soil and a dream call to follow up with that. This is a dream call for one. It's just going to replace itself with one card. But that card could just be a resource to play for the turn. And it is a resource and a Fate Weave one at that. So he'll play that out, Fate Weave, and just pass the turn. Four damage across the board sitting here with Coast City and a way to mill one card. Cottontail Explorer off the top for Coast City. Activation of Champion Power. Rotten Rancor is put back into hand. That's always the best one to see. If only Kogelichi Power is generated a Rotten Rancor, I'd be the happiest. Rotpaw Gang now joins the rest of Co City's troops. Swing in for four. More importantly here, a hit. It's going to take a Silver Talon Adjudicator, put it into the crypt as Heaton starts his turn. And Silver Talon Adjudicator will come down. He'll draw some cards and gain some health. Goes up to 13. Back over to Coast City. Strangle. Off the top. Well, pretty sure you strangle here then. Or maybe Rancor. Wow. Heaton says no way, Jose. Coast City. We'll take game number one. Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's an appropriate time to concede. The game was lost. Uh, it is the finals. You've, you're already in the money, so you don't really need to make your opponent play that one out. Move on to the next game.
All right, so we'll be loading up game number two. And it looks like we have it up and ready to go. Coast City up one nothing over Heaton. We'll take a look at opening hands for both players. Ooh. All right, I'm not. I'm not thrilled if I'm eating. I don't see an arcane focus. I don't see a guidance. We're we're only fifty percent of the way. We just have resources. Even if we do have thirty dollars in one drops, <laughs> just sitting in our hand. Um, on the other side of the board, Kagalichu. I don't know if that's keepable. I think both of these players might pitch their hands. Let's see what they decide to do. Co City on the draw, but sitting with a lot of high cost cards in hand. And he does he with mulligan. the keeping. Interesting. Very interesting. Co City does have a Fate Weave shard, so can find some more resources. And is on the draw. Heaton decides to keep his hand with that triple rune bind. We'll play out a diamond shard and uh, just pass the turn. I wonder if either of these players will push for Cosmic or at least Platinum after this. <laughs> I mean, we're coming up on uh, just a month left for the season, so I'm sure they have time to make it. Monsagi Coins will come down. Heaton does find a resource. We'll play out a Sapphire Shard, so one away from Silver Talon and Dark Heart, leaving up his Triple Room Bind. Has enough to resources to play all three. As we go over to Coast City, plays out a Blood Shard, now at three. Doesn't have that double blood for Fentio, so turn passes back to Heaton, finds a Transmogrifate off the top. Here comes a resource, and here comes that Silver Talon Adjudicator. Going to draw a couple cards. Arcane Focus being and uh, Guidance. That's... Uh, those are good combos. You know, that's that's what he needed. That's how he fixed his hand. Now he's set. Actually, like, straight up, no jokes. I, I think this is looking really good for Eaton, who has the cards necessary to take control of the board now, already has an aggressive troop on the board. And we can actually see that Coast City is struggling to get a, a threat onto the board. Fentio is going to be here, but that's going to be a Fentio rune here pretty quick. Or it's yeah. yeah, transmogrified or dark heart, any number of things. Oh yeah, enjoy your dread harvest. Arcane focus gonna find a resource. He'll play that out now at three. Can still guidance. Probably gonna leave up into the unknown though. Swing for three. Coast city gonna take that. Go down to eighteen. This is the finals for somebody asking. It's game two of the finals. Heaton is down a game in the match. Coast City playing to win. We'll see a resource here. Blood resource for Coast City now at five. Coast City kind of just wants a way to discard that Yaz can. Yeah, so badly. Has a lot of high cost cards. He's going to Mordrum's Gift. I thought the only thing in the crypt was the was the rune was the cottontail. Mordrum's gift on a cottontail. I guess that would get him to his resources faster if he finds them. Gives him a free trip because of the Mordrums. Wow. Forced to discard two cards now, <laughs> which means he can yeah, discard, he discard the it. Oh, yeah. the power. Spine Scuttler is one. And that Rod Paw game. Clash of Steel for Heaton off the top. That's a key card in this matchup. That is one of the things that can just totally lock this game out. Kogelich can't go wide if they are clashed. 
back down to one card. And the Diamond Sapphire deck really just needs to keep a Dark Card and Lazan on the board. Granted, the Sultan Adjudicator putting in some work. Here we'll play out that Wakuna coins. Sitting at 25 health, Co City at 15, so 10 health separating both players. Passes the turn, leaving Into the Unknown and Runebind available. Blood Shard for Co City now at 6. We'll see Yazukan attempted to be played will make it onto the board, but it probably won't stay there for very much longer. We see a swing for one. Heaton says, okay, I'll take this. Go to 24. Yeah, no reason to really care about this. Rune bind on Yazukan. Turn passes back to Heaton. Rune bind. So, uh, I use my rune bind, I get one back. He could have had a four of a kind. That's a really powerful hand. Swing in here for three. Co City gonna fall to twelve. Heaton desperately trying to force a game number three. Here comes Dark Heart of Nilzan, which means Co City will have to sacrifice a non socketed troop at the start of his turn. That also means that Heaton is gonna have to sacrifice the Silver Talon Beat Bird. Yazukan comes back thanks to a resource off the top for Coast City. We'll play it out now with seven. And here comes Thanks Eternal though. Seeker. Going to be Rune Bind, though. Yeah, get rid of that. Thankfully, though, the Yazukan coming back the way it does doesn't get to bring back any troops from the crypt. Not that I think there's anything super valuable in there. Actually, let's take a look at the Kaguichi player's crypt because it is kind of relevant. Yeah, we are looking at Rawpaw Gang, I suppose. Spine Scuttler. Not really the most thrilling of hits. Clash of Steel being activated. What do you think you keep here if you're Coast City? <laughs> you want to keep your yes again, but I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. Yeah, Yazakan would go off if there was no uh, rune bind, but we're pretty sure we're going to see a rune bind. Yep. All right, so Co City here with a well. Wanted to try to close out Heaton, but Heaton's having nothing of that. Kagalichu. And just pulling a resource there. Uh, this is the replay, sweet Baxter, replay. Here comes a swing here with that Crusader for four. Heaton going to fall to 20, but still comfortably 12 health away or above Coast City. Start of Heaton's turn. Darkheart already. Psychic Ascension off the top. We'll see that swing in here for four. It's in real replay time, just to answer people. So this is simulating the player's time that they took for thoughts, but there's a hard cap. Like if a player took 
six four minutes to make a decision we only see like a 20 to 30 second wait And Gargolith for Coast City, unfortunately. That's not what he needed. It's just going to get this force itself to be sacked. Well, it does stop the Dark Heart for a turn. It does. Start of Heaton's turn, Dark Heart readies into the unknown. We'll see a second Dark Heart for Heaton. And he'll be content just to hang back here. Coast City has to sacrifice the Gargolith. Cottontail Explorer off the top. It's a card. Mordrum's Gift in hand. An eternal seeker would be great if there wasn't a rune button in hand. Yeah, so so there so there is like a moment here where you look at the board and you go, Well, my opponent has played three. Three rune binds and they're only nineteen cards into their deck. I should be able to take a chance. We'll see Mordrum's Gift come down. And we'll see what Coast City pulls out of his crypt. Rune Bind, though, unfortunately, doesn't matter. That's going to turn into a Mysterious Rune. Put it onto the field, and we'll see Cottontail Explorer. I do like that the Cottontail Explorer will find a resource like that. Pop the Mordrum's Gift back into play. Out comes the Gargolith again, which created a smash and bump. you got to give Coast City props for trying to hang in there. Definitely. But unfortunately, double Dark Heart makes things really difficult to to stay in this here. He also Heaton also has Psychic Ascension available. You see Activation Champion Power to create that Oracle Song. He'll draw two cards. Psychic Ascension will tick down to five. Arcane Focus, one of those cards. Psychic Ascension now down to four. Looking at the top two cards, one in hand, one it back into the deck. And just going to pass. So Coast City is going to have to sacrifice two non-socketed cards. So we see the two lower cost <laughs> troops. I wonder what he chooses. <laughs> yeah, right. One soggy coins. Deathhead's Rider. That is forced to sacrifice one of the dark cards. That that is legitimately okay here. And Deathhead's Rider with that scrounge. Heaton's forced to sacrifice a dark heart. Coast City's troops protected with Spell Shield thanks to that Gargolith. Here comes a swing for seven. Heaton going to take that, go down to 13. Monsagi Lilypad definitely going to create that Battle Hopper to sacrifice to that Dark Heart of Nolzan. So, kind of cute to see that Zoras Rectory summons abominations when the, when the Dreadlings sacrifice each other. So that's actually a lot of Dark Heart fodder. We see Psychic uh, Ascension. I, I don't know. I, I think Coast City might still be in it. Shard Ward created as a result. That's a thing. That's a thing, and the Lacuna Coins is kind of a thing, but he can't target the opposing troops with Into the Unknown or Transmogrifate here. Dark Heart forcing the sacrifice of that Battle Hopper. I think we're going to see a Zorath's Rectory hit the board here. We're going to see some Obama, Obama Dreadlings. Ooh, abomination Obama. Dreadlings. For Coast City. Uh, I think he might hold that. I don't, I'm not sure. Oh, well, no. He, never mind me. Windmill Slam. Get rid of the dark cards. They're the biggest threat. 
Could transmogrifade to keep the other dark hearts of Nozan safe. Looks like that's what he is going to do. So transmogrifade will turn it into... Okay, playing, playing with, with fire. fire. Okay. It's a card that does things. With five Every five and higher cost yeah. card. Yeah. Every five and higher cost card you play will allow you to deal two damage to target champion or triple or three. Uh, it's probably believe, three. I believe it's three. No, it's two. Future coming is going to tell us that. Two. I can't imagine we don't see the Zorat's Rectory here. I really want to see a little 1-1 one, one abomination. Yeah, get in there, Zorat's Rectory. Go, go, go. So uh, two Dreadlings created as a result. Vroom, vroom. I'd have to see Shard Ward here to protect against the Wild Death. Oh, wow. Can block that Death Edge Rider, too. Oh, no. He gets... Like one of the four or five flying two drops. No, that's it, Ryder. Ooh, and Clash of Steel as well. Oh, no, that's so filthy. Ghost City was trying so hard, he just wanted to win the bash. <laughs> no. So what do you pick here? He's going to keep the Gargolith. Gargolith, yeah. I think you have to keep the Gargolith here, but maybe maybe some part of him is like, maybe I keep the Zorath here. Or the, but, the Smashadon with Crush, too. Yeah, maybe. I mean, here's the thing, though. The minute he doesn't take Gargolith, he's going to lose it, it, whatever yeah. it is, to yeah, the unknown. unknown yeah. So, Kuna Coins discarded for some Diamond Dice. Paragon of Thought's going to take Take Wing. That makes the uh, Chimera Guard lethal next turn. And I don't think there's anything Coast City can do. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. So Take Wing is plus two, plus two, and Chimera Guard gets attack equal to its defense. Defense. One, yeah. So a 6 4 swinging in. We see activation of the Acolyte of Shoku to create those Dreadlings. Gargolith and those three. So 10 damage. Heaton more than happy to take it, knowing that there's no more cards in Coast City's hand. And he has a take wing with his Chimera Guard fallen. Arcane Focus also there. We see the take wing on the Chimera Guard. 4-4 four, four. will turn into an 8-4 here with this swing. 8 damage exactly. And Heaton will force a game number 3. Ah, uh, that feels bad. <laughs> Yeah, at least he held in against that for as long as possible. He did. He definitely did. And I mean, what's a bash finals if we don't go one and one and force game three? And and really good matches too. Like really, really entertaining. Yeah, I wonder how many actions gave him the lethal he needed there. Because it's got to be more than just Take Wing. But Take Wing looked real good there. Like, think of the stuff that had to happen. The Clash had to make that three drop. His random power had to make that action. Both players tied at 1-1. Winner here will walk away with $500 and be crowned this week's Hex Bash champion. Just loading up the final match here between both players. Looks like we're up and ready to go. Here we go. Heaton and Co City. Winner will be crowned this week's Hexbacks champion, $500 richer. We'll take a look at opening hands here for both players. Coast City 
Sitting on a Blood Shard, Monsagi Coins, Hero Fall, Double Mordrum's Gift, Eternal Secret, and Underworld Crusader. Heaton here with Triple Sapphire Shard, two Into the Unknowns, a Dark Heart of Nozan, and a Clash of Steel. I think they toss both of these hands. Uh, Coast City might keep because he's got the turn three Underworld Crusader. I would respect that, but he is on the play. It's a very difficult hand to keep. Mordrums and Eternal Seeker aren't doing anything for a long time, so he's basically got a four card hand and he's one resource short. On the other side of the board, I mean, there's no working focuses, there's no guidances. What are you going to do? Throw it back. <laughs> Meet the Future, a player I respect quite a bit in chat, saying easy keep for Diamond Sapphire, and both players do, in fact, keep. Final match here between both players. As we get down to the action, both players just going to be playing their standard one resource, passing the turn. Eaton has not dropped a match up until this point. Coast City with a Runier Hierophant off the top will play out a Blood Shard. He needs a resource real bad. There's a Guidance. No Diamond to play it. Two Extended, one Not Extended into the Unknown Alternate Arts. Hey, it's the last card we ever wanted to see. <laughs> Coast City here in a bad situation. Sapphire Shard for Heaton, still looking for that diamond, so both players in a little bit of a problem here. <laughs> Emperor's Lackey, that's at least a play he can do for Co City. So he did have the choice of just not playing the Lackey this turn to then discard like Eternal Seeker or something. We might be allowed to do that anyway. Into the unknown, going to turn that uh, Emperor's Lackey into a touch of Zentov. There's the diamond. Things just went full online for Heaton, who is going to have a real hard time struggling in a match where there are two resources. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Two resources up. Three resources up after this against an opponent who hasn't even put a troop on the board now. It's got to be the Touch of Zentoth getting thrown out. Touch of Zentoth will go into the crypt. Back over to Heaton. This this could easily just be Dark Heart, and I think that'd be game. Yeah. Here comes the Dark Heart. I mean, there's no way this isn't the way to do it. You've got Runebind to save it. Next turn, you've got Into the Unknown to save it. The only threat your opponent's put down on the board is an Exarch now. Does There's find the a third resource. resource. There. there we go. And it's a blood, which makes it interesting. Of course, Heaton with five open resources. Underworld Crusader attempting to be played. Heaton will allow it for right now. And then we'll see into the you know, turn that Underworld Crusader into a butcher. Not miserable. Swing here for four. Coast City going to fall to 17. Heaton definitely here in the driver's seat. Butcher, though, going to target that dark heart. And rune bind on the butcher. So that'll turn into a mysterious rune. Coast City hoping to find a resource as a result. We'll just play out that Monsagi coin and uh, trying to find a way to get back into this here. Dark Heart's going to force Coast City to, re to uh, remove that rune, so unfortunately going to lose that here. Sapphire Eyes for Heaton will allow him to Fate Weave. Activation of Champion Power for that Oracle Song. Going to play that out, draw two cards. 
That's how messed up this game is feeling. Dreaming Fox just got to activate, create an Oracle song, play it, and we haven't even seen the Kaga Michu power yet. Mysterious Rune is sacrificed. Cottontail Explorer off the top for Co City. Well, I mean, you 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 play for the best. You play your Cottontail Explorer. And you try to get your fifth resource so you can get back the Eternal Seeker that you dumped into the crypt earlier. Yeah, or you try to hero fall. That's fair too. That's woven into nothing. That does get a counter out of the way. Keaton Hill still at 25 health. Spiderling generated for Co City. Gravebane Vile. Here comes a swing for four. Chump block with that Spiderling. Co City protecting his health total. Second Dark Heart for Heaton. Fifth resource Fortunes. now. Ooh. Fortunes can try to resolve here, but we can see the grave on the, the grave being vile on the board. Neo was giving it some slack earlier. It's a five hundred dollar looking card right now. You almost don't even want to play the Cottontail Explorers because you don't want to be putting more into the crypt for the vial to eventually eat. And there we see that Gravebane vial removing the rest of Co City's crypts, mm -hmm. putting it to the void. I think my replay system here is lagging. Yeah, it's a little bit. It's no worries. Into the unknown on that rune near Hierophant's going to turn it into a Might Singer. We'll see a block here for four damage can be assessed to Co City. He's at nine. Heaton's at a comfortable 25. Hasn't taken a point of damage here at all from Co City. Well, Gargolith goes into the crypt. We'll see that Might Singer come down. 3-3. Three, three. The old 3-3 plus. The old three, three Might Singer. Well, Kona Coin's going to be cycled here to draw a card. That card is transmogrified. That card could be just about anything. These dark cards are looking real nice and safe, real nice and cozy. They've dug in. Again, I wish we could see what the dream call produced and the selection process here, but we'll see what it uh, what it finds. Um, dream call? Mind call. We'll see the double swing here. Has to protect that health total here. And we see the chumps. Co City. I mean, he might as, I mean, he's gonna he might as well, right? Yeah, he's going to lose them anyway. Co City finding yep. a hero fall. We'll see that lily pad come down. Going to create a battle hopper. Eternal Seeker. Mm -hmm. this Eternal Seeker is actually enough to get Co City back into this game. There's no way to stop it. 
But what we might see here is the uh, transmography being used on one of the dark cards to turn it into a three cost card. And indeed, turns it into a Wakazashi War Bunny. Lord Goyle Curator. Yeah, and the funny thing here is that you are going to see the Lord Goyle Curator able to trigger off multiple times. It was going to be sacrificed to the Dark Hearts before now, and now it's going to be able to sit on the board. I wonder if it was worth sacrificing the threes to keep the Seeker on the board to maybe Mordrum's Gifted after you sacrifice it. But, I mean, that's kind of irrelevant. Here we see the Transmogrifade. Tome of Lore. Going to sacrifice not the enough. draw card. Yeah, not, not, not quite enough of those in the Diamond Sapphire deck yet to make a deal, but once five of them are sacrificed, that way we will see a random dragon or avatar created. Those are being created by the Lord Goyle Curator, who is absorbing cards from the opposing crypt for a resource each turn. Transmogrifade, going to hit there, turns it into a sign of Boloslav. Sign of Boloslav. Which, if he can find a way to get that into his crypt and then play an Underworld Crusader and then Mordrum's Gift. Yazukan. Well, so the real problem with Yazukan here is there's never going to be anything in the crypt anymore. Oh. It is a 3-5 Life Drain Flyer. We'll see guidance from Heat, and that'll allow him to Fate Weave and draw a card. So we're in Talon Adjudicator, drawing some cards. Heat is still sitting at a comfortable 26 health. A lot of thinking going on here. Coast City trying to figure out if there's any way for him to stick in this game. And I mean, as he slowly watches the troops in his crypt get sucked out, I wonder if I wonder if there is. Like those Mordrum's gifts are basically dead cards now. Yeah, as a can's not gonna bring any troops back. There's a lot of enemy birds in the sky. There he is. can't even swing it. You're going to see the hero fall. Targeting the Silver Talon Adjudicator finds one more to get rid of. Activation of that champion power from Kagalichu. Hero fall is back again. And Roombind. Going to go ahead and target that uh, curator there, or Lorgoyle. And here comes a swing for six. Three health gained here from Coast City as a result of that Yazukan hit. So 10 health separating Some both. Damage. Coast City looks like he's back in there. He just swung. We'll see Transmogrifade. Eh, probably not what he was looking for here. Swing for five. We see a chump with that battle hopper. Coast City now back down to seven. Ooh, Rodpaw gang off the top. Here comes that Well of Ancients. Mordrum's Gift's going to be woven into nothing, Fate Weave for Heaton. What? That can't stop the second one. The second one is going to get the Gargoyles back! All of Coast of the Shields are now Spell Shield. Uh, spell Shield doesn't stop Clash of Steel, though. So that's a thing. Spell Shield, spell shield doesn't stop Clash of Steel, but you do get to keep your Gargoyles. Shard will come down. We'll see a swing for three. Coast City at three. Lord Goyle going to go ahead and activate. No clash. No clash of steel there. Keaton knows that Coast City has to develop more on the board. We're going to see the swing from just the Gargolith. Are we going to see the Rotpaw Gang touch down? Rotpaw Gang comes down. 
Along with that uh, bushy, determined bushy. Oh. And Odorok, he's going all in on the board. No cards left in hand. And Heaton has a Clash of Steel. He has got to be happy about that. What is in the, the Crusader? The Crusader is Death Cry Summon Up Light Blossom. It's not even Skyguard Steadfast here. So, barring a top deck, and, and I mean, we see a Tome of Lore, but but Heaton actually still needs something to get through here. There's another, another Tome, Tome of, of Lore. Oh my gosh. Psychic Ascension. Psychic All right, ascension. So he psychically ascends. Go. He gets a random action. Gets a Dust Cloud. Here, activates Clash of Steel. This. Oh, no! Co-City didn't sacrifice things in time for the oh, Rough Hog game. Oh, no! And now the Lore Goyle can swing in, and with the Dust Cloud, dust it's cloud. lethal. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Heaton will take it down. Two to one. And is your next Hex Bash champion. That is... That is... Just, I don't even know what to say about that. Except sometimes, Sometimes you just... Like, I mean... These players have been playing at this point for just under nine hours. Like, you see how hard Coast City had struggled to keep into game two. And I mean, if we're if we're being honest, it probably didn't matter. I mean, it is it a would six six flyer him. life drain, so it would have gave him some yeah. health. It would have gave a him turn, a turn. For sure. But beyond that one turn, we have to wonder if and how much it really could have got there because there's still more random actions coming he needed to swing like three times to be to finish him off he needed to swing four times because then the lore goyle could have blocked one you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. I there, guess that's true. there was still a lot of game to be played but you know if you're coast city you feel bad about it but i'm guaranteed that it's not a mistake he made and, and didn't realize he'd made a mistake just you're at the end of a long day stuff like that happens but still, really great matches today here in the Hex Bash. So here are your finals. Heaton taking down the number one spot, walking away with $500, defeating Coast City 2-1. Coast City will be walking away with $250. And our third and fourth players, um, Garant and Thum, will walk away with $125 each. Not a bad haul, if I do say so myself, just under nine hours of play uh heat and walking away with 500 bucks that's a pretty good day if uh, i say so myself but some really exciting matches today uh what was your what was your highlight of today what was the one thing that you liked uh, that you saw today penta or a deck you saw render render versus yarna yeah paragon of yeah. insanity Woo! uh i liked all the games that we got to watch here in the finals uh i you know i think it was just a good day of hex i don't think we saw a whole lot of games that were non-games if that makes sense. Like, yeah, I don't think yeah. we even saw, like, oh, well, somebody just got creamed this game. That happens. Yeah, definitely. All right, so we're going to do... What about you? No, oh, I, I loved the Yarna match. I mean, just seeing that, uh, I, I, I I liked Nero's deck, too. I wish we could have saw a little bit more of that um, and, and what he did. And also, the you know, the two Tomahawks deck did pretty well, uh, moving its way on its way up as well. So, uh, yeah, you know, just some really, really fun stuff. Uh, it's always great when you can see... Uh, you know, players who are trying new things. And uh, I, I just love the the constructive meta here. Lasgar's Vengeance with its ban uh, is making some players play some things that they probably wouldn't have played before. Uh, and I think that's really good for, uh, for, for, the, uh, for, the, uh, for the meta and good for us uh, to be able to cast some really exciting matches.